welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Angela Barnes and Josh Widdicombe, Ramesh Ranganathan, Hugh Dennis and Miles Jupp. We start with a game called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, everybody, what's going on here? Is it the new series of Wife Swap? <laughs> Is this what Life of Pi looked like before they added the CGI? <laughs> yeah. Is this uh, uh, a gay couple showing Merkel and Cameron that it did actually cause the flooding? <laughs> I think he's more likely to be saying, so we're agreed, three more days, then we eat Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it simply dogging for posh people? <laughs> Roll over to that one there. <laughs> mm, you're doing an excellent job. Keep it going. Very good. We'll just, we'll just tie up here. Uh, <laughs> well, you can't see his Farage on the shore side with his binoculars. Just go there. It's a boatload of immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're trying to get into Britain. Uh, <laughs> Are they saying, so the rule is, if she sinks, she's a witch? Yeah. <laughs> is she saying, David, this is neither the time nor the place to bring up the D-Day landings? <laughs> is it Dara Breen livid with the new cast for Three Men in a Boat? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> To be honest, you know, lose a couple of pounds. I could be the guy there with the back to you. Uh, a couple of pounds? <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Doing that. Yeah. Does anyone know what it actually is? Yeah, I that? think this is the European leaders out on a boat trip <laughs> discussing um, this guy Jean Claude Juncker's appointment as the president of the European Commission. Yeah, we'll give you that. Well done. Thank you very much. Here, yeah. Yes, this is a picture of David Cameron lobbying European News to block the appointment of former Luxembourg PM Jean-Claude Juncker as the new president of the European Commission. Cameron continued his offensive this week, demanding an unprecedented vote on Juncker's nomination. The reason that we don't want him to be president is because he's a federalist, which are, are people who like Roger Federer. <laughs> <laughs> and their time has passed. Yeah, their time is uh, over. <laughs> we're not interested, we're not engaged. I think they should combine the election of the leader of the European Commission with the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> so, whoever... How is combining two things that we're not interested in? Uh, <laughs> gonna, make it, <laughs> gonna make it all interesting. I think this guy would make a terrific president of the EC. Uh, or, or a bad one. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> it's really difficult to make this both an interesting story and an interesting opening round. Hey, everybody, finally the chance to do all those jokes you wanted to hear about the 19 year president of Luxembourg, Junko Dunker. Uh, yeah, so a wanker. We're all going <laughs> Doesn't Cameron need a candidate to, to replace him, to say that, that Europe does love, like Mr. Bean or David Hasselhoff? Or... Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or Conchita Wurst. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So he's a, he's a federalist and he comes from Luxembourg. Yeah. And we have nothing in common with Luxembourg, except possibly in the future, our FIFA ranking. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron is basically trying to be tough against UKIP, isn't he? He's going to yes, try and yes. show everybody that he's really tough. Because what happened, he made a mistake, he called UKIP, he said all their supporters were fruitcakes, loonies and closet racists. And then loads of people actually went out after he'd said that and voted for UKIP. It was like he had described a large part of the British electorate. <laughs> there is a party for me! <laughs> Finally! <Brilliant! laughs> Don't you think it's ridiculous, though? I mean, the reason UKIP did very well in the European election is because everybody's worried about immigration. And it's kind of, what I don't understand about that is why they think immigrants want to come here. It's like the immigrants have looked on TripAdvisor for Britain <laughs> and gone, oh yes, no, this looks good, yes, it's cold, it's wet, they're shit at football, let's go there. <laughs> that was an incredible generic immigrant accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was very good. Tiny, bit, tiny bit of sure. Nigeria, tiny bit of, yeah. uh, of yeah. the Indian subcontinent. It was yeah, amazing yeah. how you got the most. A little Susan of Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> And a tiny little bit of meerkat. <laughs> In other news, what has David Cameron claimed he can't get on holiday? Oh, this, this is this the is... idea that he can't actually get mobile phone reception mm. when he's on holiday in Cornwall. Said that he couldn't actually hear 
President Obama on the phone once. And you're thinking, surely that's just Obama, isn't it? Going, oh, I can't be asked to speak to Cameron. I'm losing you, David! Yeah. I'm losing you! <laughs> Bye! It's a very kind of terrifying situation that World War Three could break out, but David Cameron would not know and be at the Penzance Otter Sanctuary. <laughs> Oh, shall we invade Iran, David? Sorry, I'm at Trago Mills doing my shopping. Yeah, that's good. good West Country knowledge. That's excellent West Country knowledge. Have you been to Trago Mills? I've never been to Trago Mills. What that's is it, please? It is a <laughs> shop. <laughs> Thank you. It's a shop halfway down the A38 that sells cheap carpets and uh, sports equipment, and it's also made to look like a mock Tudor castle, and it has peacocks roaming the ground. <laughs> Trago Mills sounds like a bad guy from a Bond movie. <laughs> yeah. You have crossed me once too often, but you will rue the day you crossed Trago Mills. <laughs> have, yeah, I have cheap carpets and conservatory furniture. <laughs> I know that the point of this story is to sort of strong arm mobile phone companies into sharing math as some sort of technical element to it. But it is a, a, a slightly ridiculous situation that, that if I walk 10 feet, I'm suddenly out on all those times that Obama's ringing me, that I've got to return home and like the, the like, local shopkeeper goes, Oh, you had a, you had a phone call? No phone? Uh, <laughs> some, some Obama boat rang. <laughs> He said it was very sunny in Iraq. Uh, it just shows you the different level of technology between the two countries. Obama's got Air Force One and the Beast, and Cameron has got a Samsung Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you think he got to the point where, like, you know, Nick Clegg finally thinks he's, he's stepping up to the plate, like Cameron's on the phone, to listen, my phone reception is a nightmare, we've got an important situation. Nick, I need you to step up, I need you to do the right thing. Can you get in touch with Vodafone and get this sorted out? <laughs> Call him on the landline. Yeah. That, <laughs> that does seem you seem to yes. have cut through the many levels of the story quite easily. I wonder if, it, if, he's, if he's on a holiday with his family, it might be that he doesn't want to give Obama the landline number in case his mum answers. Yeah. Like, oh, mum, he's so embarrassing. He's supposed to talk to me, not you. The honest truth is, Obama doesn't call him. <laughs> Why does he want to take work calls when he's on holiday anyway? He's on, he's on holiday, for heaven's sake. Obama shouldn't, shouldn't be ringing him when he's on holiday. He should be, he should be more bloody respectful. <laughs> and, and secondly, we don't want him to be answering work calls. When he's on holiday, he needs to relax and get himself into the right sort of state of mind for running the country. You don't want him to be sort of making important phone calls about policy at the same time as he's trying to prevent his children squeezing sun cream into the car radio or something. <laughs> It does look like the most boring... I mean, I've been on some bad holidays. Never have gone, oh, what did we get up to? Sat with our back to the beach and enjoyed a bottle of water. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a very exciting game they play where they just sit there for hours and see which one tries to rehydrate themselves first. <laughs> It'll be magical. In other news, what has the government promised motorists this week? They, they've said that if your um, ticket machine is broken, then you can just park there. Which is basically going to lead to people getting to the ticket machine, seeing they've got no change, getting the baseball bat out the back of their car. I've got no change, but I do have a baseball bat. What sort of impulse purchase is that? <laughs> uh, no, just, a, just, a, just a bar of chocolate peas. <laughs> Hello, are they baseball bats? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do think it is a weird strategy, because what you're saying is we're going to make it OK for you to park by a broken metre. Um, so, so, you know, a solution seems to be fix the metres, do you know what I mean? R rather than make it OK to park next to broken ones. It's like saying, well, you know, all the trains are late and we know they never arrive, you know, when they're supposed to. So what we've decided to do to tackle the problem, we've decided to abandon the concept of time. <laughs> so, so, nobody's ever going to be late for anything. <laughs> Are you, are you late, or are you not late, or have you simply never, has it mm. not arrived to you? Oh! oh. <laughs> 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 the information that, and people go, I thought you'd be able to help me. Oh, will I not be able to help you? Uh, <laughs> I'm blowing your mind. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Why has Pickles done this now? I reckon all that's happened is recently Eric Pickles got a parking ticket when he was only ten minutes late and he's thought, oh, I could do something about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, he looks like there. He looks like Trago Mills. <laughs> <laughs> you crossed me for the last time, Mr Bond. <laughs> yeah. His hat, rather weirdly, has got the face of an owl, if you look at it. <laughs> By the way, on an interesting related note, what did Labour promise for everyone this week on Twitter? Oh, owls! owls. <laughs> Genuinely owls. The Labour Twitter feed, they claim, got hacked with the words, everybody should have his own owl. Right. 
This is this is sinister. <laughs> this is Trago Mills. Uh, <laughs> He's infiltrated both <laughs> political parties at the same time. Well, I don't know. I think it's a, giving birds a prey away. I think it's a quick fix, but it's not a long-term solution. <laughs> <laughs> I just very sad. I live on my own. I was looking forward to getting an owl to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> All I've got is my Henry Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you lived at home with an owl and said, oh, just you, me, now, owl, and then the owl just slowly turned its head away. <laughs> Okay. At the end of that round, the points go to Josh, Angela, and Andy. Now we play a round called Mock Them Up and Throw Away the Key. This game involves Ronish, Angela, and Josh. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round's our stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. Okay, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is food. Who wants to come in on that? Josh. I, uh, I'm not a fan of people that are pretentious about food, the kind of people that pretend they like dark chocolate. <laughs> and by that I mean anyone that claims to like dark chocolate, because no one actually likes dark chocolate. No one's eating normal nice milk chocolate going, well this is good, but I wish it tasted a bit more like paracetamol. <laughs> All this pretension. I went into a cafe for breakfast the other day. One of the things they sold on the menu, toasted bread. That is called toast. <laughs> what are my other options? Flaked corn top with the juice of a milked cow? <laughs> Maybe I don't know what people want from food. I was walking along the street the other day. A van went past on it. It said, Waitrose, do you like your bananas green? And I thought, no. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of diarrhoea, no. <laughs> I don't like my bananas green for the same reason I don't like my chicken Kiev's dangerously underdone. <laughs> but now you go into Waitrose, so all they've got is green bananas. You go, am I the only person that's ever bought a banana because they want to eat the banana? <laughs> Someone else goes, oh, I think I'll fancy a banana in about seven days. <laughs> Better go out and buy one now. <laughs> Can you come out tonight, Steve? No, I've checked my diary, I'm eating a banana. <laughs> And all they do is sell them in bunches, so basically what I've got is no bananas for seven days, <laughs> followed instantly by far too many bananas all at the same time. <laughs> well done, Josh. OK, let's have the next topic. The subject is health. Who wants to come in on that? Angela. Uh, yeah, I, I am quite a sickly person. Uh, my own mother once said, Jesus, Angela, if you're a dog, they put you down. That's <laughs> Yeah, I've, got, I've got something called glue ear. Well, I don't know if you know what glue ear is. It necessitates the wearing of grommets in your ears, right? Now, I don't know. Most, some people have grommets when they were a child. Child is the key word there. Right, I'm 37, I've got grommets. I might as well have sodding nappy rash. <laughs> Even the word grommet is a cartoon character. Isn't it? You don't get that with adult procedures, do you? My grandmother, she's had a bilateral hip replacement. She hasn't had a double sponge bob. <laughs> grommets. Right, and they're inconvenient as well. They're inconvenient because I love swimming, right, but I can't get my ears wet. So I have to wear a swimming hat. My mum bought me a red one because she said it would just look like your hair. <laughs> it doesn't, no, I look like a Lego version of me. <laughs> and that's not even the worst of it. Right? That's not, the worst of it. Twice a year, I have to attend something that's called the Glue Ear Clinic, which takes place at my local children's hospital. <laughs> you have not known humiliation until you've been a 37-year-old woman sitting on a plastic toadstool... <laughs> Old Mr. Men comics waiting for a nurse wearing a pepper pig apron to call your name, <laughs> or ten sets of parents staring at you wondering where the hell your child is. <laughs> On the upside, though, I do have the world's largest collection of brave girl stickers, so it's not all bad. <laughs> and one, of the, one of the side effects of having glue ear is my eardrums burst quite frequently, right? And that's not pleasant, it's pussy, it's messy, it's oozy, it's bloody, it's, it's horrible, it's not very nice. It happens to me all the time. It happens to me once during sex. Oh. I know, I know, disgusting. Right? Although it was quite entertaining to see the look on the gentleman in question's face as I saw him think to himself, oh my God, I've actually shagged her brains out. <laughs> well, <I'm not. laughs> OK, that leaves us with Ramesh. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. The topic is animals. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm, I'm into animal rights, actually. I, I recently watched this film, Blackfish, uh, which is about this um, killer whale 
that um, ate two of the trainers at SeaWorld, killed two of the members of staff at SeaWorld. It's an interesting film, but I do have some issues with it. Um, you know, one of the things they say in the film is, uh, we call them orcas. Some people call them killer whales, but these are beautiful, beautiful orcas. We call them orcas. Uh, this one killed two people. Right? <laughs> That's a killer whale. Right? He lost the right to be called orca when he slaughtered two people. Yeah? <laughs> surprised by what happened, people are surprised by what happened, they say, oh my god, I can't believe, I can't believe what's happened at SeaWorld, I can't believe that one of the, the killer whales tried to eat one of the trainers. Listen, that's not a surprise, I'm a vegan, right? If you make me dance with a sausage on my nose for long enough, <laughs> eventually I will try the bloody sausage, right? I don't think that's a surprise. <laughs> and the film is presenting obvious stuff, I was talking to an intelligent person about blackfish, she said to me, I can't believe what's going on at SeaWorld, it's disgusting, I can't believe they kidnapped them from the wild. <laughs> How else did you think that they got them? Did you think there was some sort of recruitment drive? <laughs> and the thing is, you know, is they want to set this whale free. They want to set Tilikum free because he killed two people. Because he killed two people, they want to set him free. I mean, that's the opposite of crime and punishment, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> people say because he lives in such horrible conditions. Listen, people live in horrible conditions. We don't let them off for doing something. You don't say, oh, Derek here killed six people. We can't do anything about it because he lives in Hastings. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well done. The next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Angela, which category would you like? I'd like home news, please, Dara. Home news. Ah, blessed break from sport. The answer is 56 years. What is the question? Is it, how long does it currently take to get a UK passport? <laughs> Is it what the uh, minimum prison sentence should be for anybody that takes their shirt off in the summer? <laughs> I find it unacceptable. I, I remember like when, when it used to be hot days, my dad would open up the curtains first thing in the morning and say, uh, the white people are going to get naked today. <laughs> <laughs> Is it how much did David Moyes age in his six months at Old Trafford? <laughs> How long would most blokes happily sleep in the same sheets for? <laughs> what does a two-minute match summary by Phil Neville feel like? <laughs> Is it how long has Prince Charles been thinking, oh, any day now? <laughs> How long could I hold a poo in if I shared a flat with Oscar Pistorius? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, that is the flat share sitcom I want to see. <laughs> how, how long would it take to collect sufficient owls for Labour to honour their... <laughs> <laughs> is it how long since England were last eliminated in the first round of the World Cup? Absolutely, thank you very much, Josh Rudigan. Very good. <laughs> yes, the answer I was looking for was how long is it since England last failed to progress beyond the group stage of a World Cup? Uh, were you surprised? Were you got a no. Win? No, I mean we, we didn't lose all our games, did we? I mean I thought we managed a very creditable nil-nil draw. <laughs> with the 2,500 to 1 outsiders. So, you know, people said we had low expectations, didn't we? And then we all got disappointed when we were knocked out after two games. So, obviously, our expectations weren't quite low enough. <laughs> well, it? It's the players as well. They didn't... Wayne Rooney said uh, that if we'd won, we'd have gone through, and that's the main <laughs> lesson to learn. <laughs> If that's the main lesson to learn, we really need to go back to basics. <laughs> well, they were in Liverpool, though, and Liverpool had five England players in, in the match day team, didn't they? There was uh, Sterling, Sturridge, Johnson, Henderson and Gerrard, and, of course, Uruguay had two Liverpool players in the squad, Suarez and Gerrard again. <laughs> so, um... Very busy man that day, wasn't he? Yeah. It is interesting because I'm finding out now that England are out, I'm finding out about the backgrounds of all my friends. Because suddenly my friend the other day was suddenly, you know, well, actually, I'm half German, so I'll support Germany now. So you kept quiet about that on D Day, didn't you? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> didn't you, Gunter? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not 
that was an unfortunate thing to bring up on the boat. Uh... I've actually just started pretending I'm Costa Rican. I, 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 I will switch to whatever uh, I need to, you know. I, I, I've, I'm in the cricket, I'm very Sri Lankan at the moment. <laughs> um, I've, during the Ashes, I pretended I was Aborigine. Like, I, I, I don't care. <laughs> I, I will go wherever the results take me. If I were Roy Hodgson now, I'd, I'd be a pundit, because... Like, he could be a pundit anywhere in the world. Apparently, he can speak five languages. Yes. Roy Hodgson, which is literally five more than Phil Neville. So. <laughs> Roy Hodgson always looks like a man who'd be far happier inside eating soup. <laughs> <laughs> what did um, a lot of England fans find enormously irritating immediately after the matches? This reality. <laughs> England football is doing adverts. Yes. Things like the Carlsberg fan squad advert. Yes, there was a series of other people found that there were complaints about, um, you know, Joe Hart and his dandruff, um, which, <laughs> luckily, he's still beaten. Good man, Joe, well done. Um, <laughs> I said, why does that, that, that company, I'm not going to give him the free ad, that company who does an anti-dandruff shampoo, which you all know, you say the word anti-dandruff shampoo, and bing, why do they even spend money? Who goes, hmm, maybe I'll have a competing anti-dandruff shampoo for my shampoo? <laughs> There's one uh, company who makes of, it. Some of us, Dara, are still worrying about dandruff. <laughs> <laughs> it's an unusual put-down, isn't it? <laughs> 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 On the one hand, zing, I'm bald. Uh, but yet, on the other, you don't come out of it like a prince, uh, has to be said. I'm not going to lie to you, I didn't think it through. No. <laughs> Take that, bald man. Uh. <laughs> oh, you social loser. Uh, yes, it has to be said that some of the England squad were probably not as well known as others. It was a young squad, a new squad. I mean, for example, there was this range of commemorative mugs uh, that was brought out and they were there on sale. And we're not making this up. And all the members of the squad, particularly Chris Smalling, uh, the Manchester United defender. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you, uh, I cannot believe they put Theo Walcott's picture on. Yeah. <laughs> It's mortifying, isn't it, actually? Yeah. The, uh, that is that's that's Smalling, and, uh, and for reference, a picture of... <laughs> I, hope there's, not, I hope there's not a mix-up, and Chris Smalling's now going to have to be the President of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happens is, if uh, yeah, he's going to get a phone call from David Cameron going, I've got you, I finally got some service. Uh, I finally got some What do we do about the Shia situation? Uh, well, no. <laughs> In other news, what might we be sending out via smartphones next year? Oh, this is a good one. This is smells. You can sell smells over your iPhone. Yes. It's brilliant, isn't it? If you fart in a meeting, you know, <laughs> just blame your phone. You know, oh, somebody sent me a farticon. I'll just turn that off, yeah. you know. <laughs> You're going to say it's going to be great when Obama finally picks up the phone and goes, Dave, I can smell pasta. You in Trago Mills? <laughs> We don't need it, do we? Like, it's this constant thing of, like, making things that nobody... Nobody has been on the phone to someone going, do you know what would make this so much easier to understand what you're on about? If I could smell you. you know, like... <laughs> there is a good use for it, for instance, if you... Um, if you're seriously into collecting your cheeses, you don't actually keep them in your own house. You, <laughs> you keep them at someone who owns a cheeser, and you say, you know, you ring up and you say, how's my camembert doing? And he goes, well, I can let you know. And he goes and he calls it, it and he texts you, you know, where, you know, you think, well, that, that needs another ten years, that sort of thing. <laughs> Genuinely phone up. Do you, do you generally check on your cheese? No, you... mate. I'm improvising. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I don't know Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please, I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. Okay, here we go. The first subject is unlikely things to hear in a school assembly. <laughs> it's your own time you're wasting, so please think twice about choosing media studies as an option. <laughs> we are not involved in extremism, and any suggestion we are is deeply offensive to us all here at the Jihadi Death of the West Academy. <laughs> Congratulations to the Year 7 football team, who beat England. <laughs> there are two new girls in the school today, uh, thanks to Louise in Year 9, who's just had twins. <laughs> uh, 
new school rule from next term there will be running in the corridors because uh, we've had to sell off the gym. <laughs> Uh, just this morning, we confiscated a bag of cannabis, and now we're asking all students to come forward if they've got Pringles. <laughs> Good news for last year's leavers. We have four at Durham, four at Edinburgh, four at Bristol, and you can't find a better selection of prisons than those. <laughs> And now for show and tell, and here is Miles with his cheese collection. <laughs> uh, congratulations to the first 11 who yesterday beat St Christopher's 37 nil. Uh, St Christopher's is an intensive care unit, but nonetheless, <laughs> well done. <laughs> well, I'm really sad to be. Uh... Leaving you as your maths teacher, I, I, I've got no idea why I've been made redundant because I've always felt that I've given 110%. <laughs> Just a note for 5D, when I said that Thomas should be in a blazer, I didn't mean set him on fire. <laughs> ah. So, uh, Ofsted inspection this morning, so uh, back us off. <laughs> Now, I know today is no school uniform day, Barry, uh, but we were hoping that you would wear something else. <laughs> and now the register is the reason that Mr Smith cannot be here at the school today. <laughs> so if ever you feel the need to do drugs, have a word with the supply teacher. <laughs> OK, the next topic is commercials that never made it to air. Come to Trigo Mills. We got peacocks and everything. <laughs> We've got surprises in store. The escalator's broken and the staff know fuck all. <laughs> Dignitas. It's not au revoir. <laughs> Have you had an accident that wasn't your fault and has ruined your life? Next time, use Durex. <laughs> Try uniform dating, because with the way government cuts are going, pretty soon it could be the quickest way to get a policeman to your house in an emergency. <laughs> If you can find it cheaper anywhere else, tell us and we'll burn their shop down. <laughs> the DFS sale has ended. <laughs> Have you been injured whilst doing voluntary work? Well, it's your lookout, isn't it? Hmm? <laughs> The Dyson hand dryer. It's the perfect way to drown out the sound of somebody having a shit. <laughs> Papa? Papa? No, I'm sorry, Nicole, we've lost him. <laughs> Buy little wine, because poor people shouldn't have to drink cider. <laughs> Steven Gerrard drinks Lucasade. This has been a Red Bull commercial. <laughs> <laughs> News International. When you talk, we listen. <laughs> to qualify for a second meerkat toy, <laughs> Alexander has invaded Ukraine. <laughs> Milk. Try and forget it came out of a cow's tits. <laughs> Have you booked Joe Hart to advertise your product? Have you paid for advertising space until the end of the World Cup? Then you may be entitled to compensation. <laughs> uh, at the end, uh, the point is going to Josh, Angela and Andy. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Angela Barnes and Joshua Whitaker.
Commiserations to Ramos Ranganathan, Hugh Dennis, and Miles Chuck. Thank you for watching. I'm Darren Green. Good night.